Okay, hi, and welcome to another installment of Math Basics, Mr. Besh. Today we're going to look at our introduction to rational numbers. Uh, it's a fancy term for saying fractions. What we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to convert from mixed value fractions to improper fractions, and then vice versa, back and forth from an improper to a mixed value. Then we're going to go over a little bit again about multiplying rational numbers, and I am going to model my technique of cross canceling. Okay? First thing that we have here is a mixed value. A mixed value fraction is a fraction that is part fraction, part whole value. My whole value part is the 4, my fractional part is 2 over 7. To make a mixed fraction an improper fraction, here is what I do. I take my whole number out front, which is 4, and multiply it by my denominator, which is the bottom value. 4 times 7 makes 28. I then take that answer and add it to the numerator, which is 2, and 28 plus 2 makes 30. Note my improper fraction is 30 over 7. Another thing I want you to note is the fact that the 7 was the fractional part on the bottom of my mixed fraction, and it is exactly the same in my improper fraction as well. The bottom of the fraction did not change. So notice that, please. Now, if I were to take my improper fraction and make that a mixed value, i got to do some old school long division. You see, the numerator 30 goes inside the box, and the 7 goes outside the box. And what I need to do is figure out how many times 7 goes into 30. 7 goes into 30 four times, and the 4 is the whole number that goes out in front in my mixed value. The remainder, 30 minus 28 gives me a remainder of 2. The remainder is the numerator of the fraction. And again, my denominator stays exactly the same, which is 7. So now, my improper fraction, which was 30 over 7, becomes 4 and 2 sevenths as my mixed fraction. This is how you convert a mixed number to an improper fraction, and then back an improper fraction to a mixed value. When we talk about multiplying fractions, here is the technique that we used yesterday. When you get two fractions multiplied together, the te technique you use is you take the numerator times the numerator. 3 times 2 gives me 6 on top. On the bottom, it's the denominator times the denominator. 8 times 3 gives me a 24 on the bottom. Remember, the red arrow designates the fact that I need to put my fraction into lowest terms. 6 over 24 in lowest terms is 1 over 4 because 6 is a factor of both 6 and 24, and when I divide the top by 6, I get 1, and when I divide the bottom by 6, I get 4. So 1 over 4 was my answer, and this is how we did it yesterday. Now I want to show you another technique that some of you may, in fact, prefer, and this is a cross-canceling technique. One of the things that I can do, I pay attention to my numerators and denominators. When I am multiplying or dividing of fractions, there is something really neat that happens. If I have a term on the top in the numerator category that shares a factor of my denominators, I am able to reduce them down. So for instance, my numerators are 3 and 2, my denominators are 3 and 8. If one of my numerators has a common factor with one of my denominators, I can divide them both by that. And when I see this, Notice, I have a 3 in the numerator, and I have a 3 in the denominator. In mathematics, if you had a fraction like 3 over 3, you would reduce it down to 1 over 1. Because 3 and 3 share the factor 3, I'm able to divide them both by 3. That would give me a 1 there, and a 1 there. My other two numbers that are involved are 2 and 8. 2 being on the top, 8 being on the bottom. I can also find a common factor that goes into 2 and 8, which is 2. Divide 2 by 2, which makes a 1, and then divide 8 by 2, and what that is going to give me is that is going to give me a 4. Now, my fractions aren't 3 over 8 and 2 over 3, it's 1 over 4 and 1 over 1. And when I multiply those guys together, again, I get the same answer I just got before, and that comes out to be 1 over 4. If you notice my two examples of what I just did, yesterday's, we actually multiplied first, then we reduced our fraction down in the lowest term. Today's, we actually reduced our fractions down first, then we multiplied. You need to choose which method you prefer, because the bottom line is there may be more than one way to get our answers, but there's only one right answer, and that is our goal, and that is what we're trying to get. Okay? Another thing that we see in this unit is multiplying more than just two terms together. This is multiplying three terms. It's done the same way. Numerator times numerator times numerator. 4 times 3 times 5 gives us 60 on top, and 5 times 4 times 6 gives us 120 on the bottom. 
reducing that down into lowest terms comes out to be 1 over 2. Or we could take it again and do a little bit of cross-canceling here. Same thing. Remember, I'm going to get 1 half again if I do all my math correctly. The shortcut in the trick is anytime you have the same number in the numerator as you do in the denominator, you can cross them both out and put 1s in their place. Notice the first thing I see is a 5 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. They are the first terms that I cross-cancel. I also see a 4 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. They are the second terms that I, in fact, cross-cancel, and they both become 1s. Now, on the top, I have left a 3. On the bottom, I have a 6. And yes, there is a factor that goes into both 3 and 6, and that is 3. On top, 3 divided by 3 is going to be a 1. And on the bottom, 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2. So now when I multiply all my top values together, 1 times 1 times 1 is a 1. Over top of my bottom, 1 times 1 times 2 gives me 2. So now my fraction, again, is 1 half when I do my math correctly. The last thing that I want to show you today is what happens when you multiply two fractions together where you might get a whole number thrown in here. You might get a mixed value. This is a piece of cake as well. Because what I do is, the first thing is I make my whole value a fraction. And you do that by taking it and putting it over 1. 12 as a fraction is 12 over 1. I can always do this with any whole value. Second thing I do is I take 1 and 1 fourth and make it an improper fraction. 1 times 4 gives me 4, add it to the top, gives me 5. So 5 over 4 is the improper fraction of 1 and 1 fourth as a mixed number. I could do it like we did yesterday. 12 times 5 on top gives me 60. 1 times 4 on the bottom gives me 4. And this is 60 over 4. In lowest terms, remember, 15 over 1. Or simply 15. Either answer is correct. I could also do a little cross-canceling here if you'd like. Take a look. 12 in the numerator, 4 in the denominator. 12 and 4, the common factor is 4. So I can divide them both by 4. Gives us a 3. And then 4 divided by 4 gives us a 1. And now I got 3 times 5 on the top, which gives me 15, and 1 over 1 on the bottom, which gives me 1. Now I can have it a 15 over 1 or just plain old 15. Either way, it represents the exact same value. And I could have done this both ways. Stepping up a little, 1, to make 2 and 5, 6 an improper fraction, I take 2 times 6, which makes 12, add 5 to that, makes 17 over 6. Now, when I'm doing the math here, 8 times 17 gives me 136 over 1 times 6, which gives me 6. I can reduce this improper fraction by making it a, a, a mixed value, like we showed from above. So I could have taken and cross-canceled a little bit. Because the numbers were so large with 136 over 6, this is what I would have done. I would have taken the 8 and the 6, notice their diagonal, 1 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator, and found a common factor. The common factor of 8 and 6 is 2. So then I would have taken 8 divided by 2. And now, doing my math, 4 times 17 would give me 68. And 1 times 3 in the bottom would give me 3. Now remember, improper fractions are not good answers. When we want an answer in simplified form, it needs to be a mixed value. So to make 68 over, it needs to be done. You need to take the numerator, 68, put it inside the box. 3 goes outside the box. 3 goes into the 6 two times, bring down the 6. That becomes a 0, bring down the 8. 3 goes into 8 two times, that's a 6. And my remainder is 2. So 2 times, that becomes my whole value. Because the remainder is 2, becomes the numerator of my fraction part. And the bottom of the fraction stays the same, and it stays 3. And this is how I convert this improper fraction to my mixed value. If you wanted to, you could over 6 and done it the exact same way. 136 would go in the box, 6 would go outside the box, and the neat thing about it is you get the same exact answer. And this is how you take a whole number times a mixed value and get an answer in simplified form. I hope you found this video both helpful and informative.